Dave has given you an overview of STARS simple methods for dealing with fairly standard operations like filing, printing, and electronic mail. These facilities are made simple because of STARS desktop and associated icons. My name is Charles Zerby. I would like now to focus more on the facilities STAR provides for dealing with the contents of documents and record processing. On my desktop, I have a document named John's Report open. Like, like all icons, when they're open, they uh, occupy a portion of the screen called a window, and each window has a header with a title along the top and a few commands, usually toward the left end of it. Along the right edge of it is a vertical scrolling mechanism, and along the bottom is a horizontal scrolling mechanism. I'll do a little of that right now, just slide the image sideways, and then I'll put it back where it was. The vertical scrolling mechanism allows me to either change pages or slide the image up and down. What I'll do right now is simply flip to the next page. So this is page two of my document, and notice there's a heading up at the top of the page, and then a single column of text with a figure in the middle of it, and then more text below it. There's a little P up at the top of this, which lets me go to the previous page, so I'll simply do that and go back to the title page of this document, which is the first page, and then back to the second page again. So now we're back where we were. Now, I can also slide the image up a little bit at a time, as I'm doing right now, and this allows me to see the boundaries between pages. So, for example, here's the bottom of page two, and here's page two's page number, the boundary between the pages, the heading for page three, and you'll notice that page three starts off in a two-column format. And there are mechanisms in STAR that allow you to change the number of columns on pages. If I want to see all of page three, then I simply click the little N again, and I now see the two columns of page three, and you notice that there's an equation right here on the page, and we'll come back and deal with that in a moment. Let's just go on through the rest of the document. This is page four. It's just a, another two-column page. And this is page five. It happens to have a bar chart illustration over in the left column and a short right column. In fact, what I would like to do right now is, is add some text to this document right here. In STAR, when you s s click the mouse button on the, over a character, then what happens is it highlights that particular character. And you'll see I can do that to any of several characters. If I click a second time on the same place, then it will select the word that contains that character. And if I click a third time, it selects the sentence that contains that word, and a fourth time selects the entire paragraph that contains that sentence. Now, paragraph is in fact what I wanted, so I'm simply going to hit the copy key, just as Dave was doing earlier, and I'm going to copy it into this upper document. And I do that by simply hitting copy key, and selecting a paragraph in the upper document that I want it to follow, and the new paragraph will appear here. Now you notice, whereas in the old document, this paragraph occupied a single wide column, since this is a two-column page, it's automatically adjusted to be as narrow as it needs to be to fit into this column, but it hasn't picked up the inner line spacing of these other paragraphs. There's a key on the keyboard labeled same, and by simply pushing that and pointing to one of the paragraphs I'd like it to be the same as, then it simply changes the format of this paragraph. Okay, so now it's double spaced and, and all just as the other paragraph was. This is basically uh, an optimization for my general mechanism called a property sheet. And if you notice down in the right hand corner of the screen now, this property sheet for this paragraph is appearing. This is a, a little window that lets me set the various parameters of a paragraph. So in fact, I can make it left flush centered or right flushed, or I can make it justified, and this one's currently justified, and that's indicated by a black highlighting. And then I can set indentations from the left and right margin. Let's actually change that now, and let's bring it in, say, three, three spaces from the left, and uh, let's say three spaces from the right. And I can also change the spacing. So let's, let's make it one and a half line spacing. And then when I, let's also change the character properties. Now, in switching to the character properties, it's actually gonna perform the indenting. So now this is indented from where it was. And now down here are the character properties that I can specify for the characters that make up that paragraph. First of all, you'll notice that there are a number of different type styles that I can pick. 
And for each type style, there's a size that I can pick. So if, for example, I change to this type size, then those are the sizes I can use. If I pick that one, in fact, only 10 and 12 are available. So let's go back to the modern style that it was in and make it be 14 point. Now these are what are called mutually exclusive choice parameters. If I pick one, the one, the current choice gets turned off. These down here are called state parameters. They're independent. So I could have it be bold and italic both, or even bold and italic and strike out. So let's take a look at what this, how this appears now. So the text now is in 14 point, bold, and it's also got what we call strike out. In other words, a line through the middle of it. Now text editing works just the same uh, as the move and copy paradigm that Dave was showing you before. I simply select, for example, a word and say move and point to a new place and it moves that word down here. Or I might say copy and select another word and it puts a copy of that word there. I can point at any place and start typing and it simply goes in place and all the paragraph stays justified as I type. This equation already partially exists and what I'll do is add another term to it. And what I'm going to do to do that is to use what we call a virtual keyboard which I'm going to cause to appear down at the bottom of the screen. Now, a virtual keyboard is basically a way of redefining the, the meaning of each of the keys on the main typing array of the keyboard. And right now it's set to the English mode. And if I change it by pushing another key on the keyboard, then it takes on the meaning of the equation. So those are different symbols that I can put into equations or some different mathematical symbols that I can use or some logic symbols that I can use or Greek characters or some general purpose office symbols. I can also um, say set it to French or German or Spanish or Italian or in general all of the accented characters on the European keyboards. Well, let's go back now and do an equation. So what I'd like to do is simply uh, add a new term to this equation. So let's say subtract uh, another term, which will be a fraction. So I'm going to use this virtual keyboard to uh, pick up a fraction. And in the numerator, I'm going to put a sum, uh, let's say from i equals 1 to, uh, to n. And within that, let's, uh, let's put a subscripted figure. So again, I'm going to go to use the special keyboard and I'm going to use a subscriptive character. And the subscriptive character I'll make be a Greek lambda. 